What does it mean to be black American on the campus of Harvard? Ooh. I think being black American on the campus of Harvard is, that's a good question. <laughs> I feel like it's about acknowledging the privilege that you've been given and taking that and doing the most with it in order to give back to the people like at home and the people and your ancestors that came before you. Because to me, it's hard to reckon with like the complicit nature of my presence here on campus and being at such a historically white institution, one that has had so much ties to the history of slavery. And I think those identities are constantly in tension with one another. So my answer is I'm honestly still figuring it out, what it means to be a black American here. I'm, I'm interested to see what my answer would be as I leave this place, but that's as best as I could give you for right now. <laughs> Harvard has increased its student diversity in recent years. In 2017, the incoming class was less than 10% black and over 60% white. But black student admissions steadily rose year by year. And Ife and Mariah's class this year is about 16% black, the highest ever. And even at just 11% black overall, Harvard is one of the blackest Ivy League schools. But as we know, black people are not a monolith. And there's something else I've noticed on campus within this small, beautiful, and complex black community here. There are a lot fewer black folks like me who go way, way back in this country, the American descendants of enslaved people. It's more of a norm here to go around the room and share where you're from. And where you're from, it's not like, oh, like I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. It's like, oh, I'm from Nigeria, I'm from Haiti, um, I'm Jamaican, you know? And for me, just like regular black, like I don't really know. As black enrollment has increased for elite universities, so too has the share of immigrants within the black student population. I would say that immigrant, meaning first and second generation, blacks are overrepresented relative to their share of the black population in the U.S., and their share is growing. But schools like Harvard aren't keeping track of the heritage of their black students. I think it's something that they don't necessarily want to talk about. And that silence, it matters. Obviously, if you're flouting that you have diversity, you're like admitting black students and, you know, reckoning with your past, but you're not actually admitting the students that have the direct tie to your past, you're clearly not doing everything that you can to mediate the issue. I'm Tremaine Lee, and this is Into America. Harvard says they're committed to addressing their connections to slavery and white supremacy. But even as the black student population has steadily grown over the past few years, researchers and students say an increasingly smaller share of these black students trace their legacy to people enslaved in this country, like those whose bodies and labor help build this institution. Can Harvard truly make amends for its past without fully understanding the nuances of blackness? As the school tries to bring more black students to campus, the question remains, black like who? In November of 2019, the school announced an initiative called Harvard and the Legacy of Slavery. A team has been researching the school's connections to enslavement and using their research to build curriculums and facilitate discussions. For Mariah, going to Harvard, engaging with this complicated legacy, is something she started to think about before she ever got to campus. But when she got here, another interesting dynamic emerged. It also has been a culture shock within Black um, spaces on campus, which has been really interesting because most of the people here that are Black um, identify as like first generation African or they're descendants of people who immigrated directly from Africa or the Caribbean. And so um, even going in people's dorms and seeing like they have flags of their homelands um, hanging up and stuff and being able to like rep that um, has definitely been a culture shock because I don't have those ties to, you know, like the homeland. Mariah was finding that for the first time in her life, most of the Black people around her were not Black like her. It's more of a norm here to go around the room and share where you're from and having to just be like, I don't know, like just like regular Black, like I don't really know. Her Nicole Hannah Jones, we've been in 40 years, we're from America. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so it was, just, it was just weird to be like, like Ohio, like I don't really know. Mariah was wrapping her head around what it meant to be part of a Black community that was more diverse and in some ways more fractured than any she'd experienced before. There's different student organizations for like different areas of the diaspora. So like there's Nigerian Student Association and they had their like Independence Day Gala, which was so much fun, like beautiful to experience. But it also sort of made me sad because it was like all these people know where they're from and even just interacting with different spaces like that, the jokes and things that usually you typically relate to all as black people sort of start to fly over your head. Like, I don't have African aunties. I don't eat the same food at Thanksgiving as a lot of the people here. And I didn't even realize that that was a thing. Maybe that's my own ignorance. Um, 
But it's been very interesting to like learn how to navigate that. The Nigerian Students Association that Mariah mentioned, the one that throws a big gala every year, says it has 200 members. That would mean that about one third of Harvard's black student body is in the club. In total, there are over 15 black affinity groups on campus, like the African Students Association and the Caribbean Club. And while there is the all-encompassing Black Students Association, there wasn't a space just for people like Mariah. So last year, students got together and formed a new club. So GASA is a Generational African American Student Association at Harvard. And Generational African American was actually a term coined by Harvard students. Generational African American. The term came about because there was a need for people like Mariah to have an easy, clear way to identify themselves. Using the term regular black doesn't feel right, because what does that even mean? And saying, I'm the descendant of enslaved people in the U.S. obviously doesn't work as a casual term. Anyway, Mariah was excited to join GASA. And I've been to a couple events and stuff so far. A lot of them have just been really casual, just like kickbacks, hanging out with people that are also generationally African-American, which has been really nice. We did like a panel with upperclassmen, which was cool to talk about their experiences on campus. And just the idea of like reaffirming that black American culture is a culture was super, super gratifying and reassuring to hear because I I came here and I started to forget. I felt that I had a lack of culture, a lack of history of homeland, being reminded of the fact that like, hey, like even though sometimes America and pop culture just sort of co-ops what we've created as black people, this was us. Like, we built so much of the culture here, the music, the fashion, uh, food, everything. Like, we have so much, such a rich, like, legacy that we've created here just in our small time of, or I guess it's a long time now, of being, like, in this country is something that, like, cannot be minimized or brushed over. So here we are in America, the descendants of enslaved people, and enslaved people built this country. You know, our blood and sweat and everything is in the soil. We were the wealth of this country for a very long time. And a lot of institutions like Harvard will say, we're trying to make amends for the past. We're doing what we can by, you know, we'll, we'll try to diversify our student body. Um, but then you end up in a situation where perhaps far less than the student, black student body are generational. Yeah. Is the institution doing enough to actually remedy any of the past? So simple answer is no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I would say the main thing that is lacking with Harvard and its attempts to reckon with its legacy of slavery, they're missing out on the on the key part, which is, you know, admitting and seeking out and recruiting generationally African-American students, specifically ones that are directly impacted by the effects of slavery. So that's redlining, underfunded public schools, um, over-policed communities, um, low-income areas. All of those are directly impacted by the effects of slavery. And if you want to truly reckon with that, you need to go to those communities and get those students. Because obviously, if you're flouting that you have diversity, you're like admitting black students and, you know, reckoning with your past, but you're not actually admitting the students that have the direct tie to your past, you're clearly not doing everything that you can to mediate the issue. We asked Harvard what, if anything, they're doing to recruit more generational African-Americans to the school. They didn't answer the question. Even though Mariah, Ife, and Kimani all belong to different parts of the African diaspora, they've each found a home within Harvard's broader Black community. Here's Mariah again. It allows me to be more comfortable so I don't feel inclined to have to code switch or switch up the ways that I move and like assimilate into different white, specifically academic spaces as well, um, in order to be seen as valid or have your ideas be credited and seem like evidence. So being able to like come back home to black people at the end of the day is something that I've really like enjoyed about my experience here. If I want to get back to you with this idea of, of feeling safe as a black student, as a black woman on campus, period, do you feel safe? I say physically, yes. Emotionally, that's more complicated. Like, for example, in class, saying what I said was well articulated. Like, what do you mean by that? It's like, and it's justified, like, always second guessing. What do you mean by that? Like, am I a student here? Am I a black student? Like, what are the ways that you see me? What are the ways you interact with me? Three out of four of my classes I'm taking right now are about racism in some form. So I deliberately put myself in spaces where my identity is validated. My identity is talked about. It's appreciated because I want to be comfortable on this campus. I want to feel safe. So it's just having those people, having that space to see, are you feeling safe here? Am I feeling safe here? Just talk about your day. Kimani, do you feel safe here? Physically, I feel safe. Emotionally and potentially spiritually, it's more complicated. I think on a more visceral level, this college does not adequately account for the Black experience. I think it's very difficult, especially as a Black man. Uh, There are less Black men on this campus than there are Black women. And so for us, it's very difficult to navigate these spaces that were created for white men 
in our talk, in our speech, in our mannerisms, we always have to be a bit overly critical. We have to overanalyze how we conduct ourselves in the classrooms, how we dress on the streets, because we don't want to be uh, stereotyped or racialized by our fellow classmates or by professors or by uh, Harvard University Police Department. So that's always something that I'm thinking about at the back of my mind. Students I've spoken with estimate that less than a third of Harvard's Black students are generational African-Americans. The majority of the rest are immigrants or the children of immigrants, like Kimani and Ife. And if Mariah was shocked by that breakdown, so was Ife. But before coming on here, I like when I was reading the names, I was like, wait, you're African, you're Nigerian, you're Ghanaian. And I'm like, that's actually so interesting. I wasn't in a place where most of the Black people I knew were Africans. And it was just interesting to see that as I stepped here, I knew people who had come from where I came from and had kind of had to conform to the culture here. But we're from Africa. It was just, it was like, I was, it was an enjoying experience, honestly. Hmm. What was your experience when you first got here, your second year? When you first got here, you know, a Black man at Harvard, there are very few Black people anyway, but here you are arriving with your full self. I was very shocked. Um, growing up in a low-income neighborhood, it's predominantly African-American as well as Caribbean-American. So I did not know what to expect quite when I got on Harvard's campus. You know, there were international students from Africa coming on campus, international students from all around the world. And then also I had never really encountered such a large white population in, in any way before. So it was definitely a huge culture shock balancing two communities that I was not aware of. How soon were y'all having conversations about, like, the Black experience on campus already, or being Black period, or being from um, Nigeria, being from, you know, generational student? How, how quickly did y'all start having those conversations? I feel like it was, like, pretty soon, because it's just, like, it's such a such a given that, like, we're obviously Black, and we're obviously at Harvard, and that's going to inform a lot of who we are here. And the more we started to talk about that, we more started to realize how different we all are, like, even within the diaspora, which is honestly really cool. Um, and just, like, hearing, like, like from Ife about like her experiences growing up, especially like in a Nigerian church and stuff like that's like an extremely like unique experience that I don't know much about and stuff. Um, so I think just like peeling back all those layers and understanding that has been like mostly where we started to talk about like where we're from and those differences and stuff. The students are clearly having meaningful conversations about the differences and dynamics of what it means to be part of the diaspora. But is Harvard the institution? With students just guessing at the demographics of the Black student body, we asked the school for an official breakdown, and they declined to respond. But several Harvard professors and administrators told us that the school doesn't collect this data. Yeah, you don't get specific numbers anyway, because they don't, they don't count them that way, right? This is Professor Camille Z. Charles. She teaches sociology, Africana studies, and education at the University of Pennsylvania. I would say that immigrant, meaning first and second generation, Blacks are overrepresented relative to their share of the Black population in the U.S., and their share is growing. Professor Charles says this became more noticeable as colleges looked to boost their numbers of Black applicants, coupled with the rise in immigration from Nigeria, Kenya, Haiti, and Jamaica. So there's a race question, and that's how they count. And so even though they ask where your parents were born, they're not collecting and and sort of storing the information that way, because I think it's something that they don't necessarily want to talk about. So more than two decades ago, Professor Charles began to look into this. Starting in 1999, she helped run a study of freshmen heading into 28 top colleges and universities in the U.S. One thing the study aimed to do was figure out the backgrounds of the black students who were going to these top schools. The immigrant students were disproportionately represented at the most selective institutions, right? So the more selective the institution, the higher the percentage of immigrant blacks relative to to native or multi-generational native blacks on campus. Of the black freshmen they surveyed, over a quarter were first or second generation immigrants. And as Professor Charles says, the harder the school was to get into, the higher the black immigrant population. When just looking at the Ivy League schools, the black immigrant population was 41% of all black students. And this study is more than 20 years old, and black migration has only gone up. Of course, there's no universal experience for first and second generation black immigrants, but Professor Charles points to a few factors that have given these students some advantages. They shouldn't be compared apples to apples to American Blacks because they're just, they're different in terms of their human capital characteristics. They're coming from college-educated parents, parents who are often in a better position economically. They are more heavily concentrated in high-level jobs, doctors, lawyers, those kinds of things, really talking about resources. They live in whiter, wealthier neighborhoods and so often attend better resource schools All of those things contribute to their above average sort of presence on campuses. And so it it isn't that Nigerians and Ghanaians value education more than American Blacks do. 
right? So that common stereotypes that grow out of this is that that immigrant blacks have a have a stronger work ethic. And if American blacks were just more like them, we wouldn't have these problems. And it, it just doesn't wash out. But even though Professor Charles debunks these harmful stereotypes, the fact remains that at elite schools, black immigrant student populations are disproportionately higher than generational black students. So it begs the question, do universities like Harvard that have gone out of their way to say, quote, we will address our troubled past when it comes to slavery, have a responsibility to students descended from enslaved people? We sent Harvard a detailed list of questions, asking for their response and what, if anything, they're doing to address this disparity. They didn't answer the questions or send a statement. Instead, they sent us a series of links to their admissions page, class demographics, and the Harvard and the Legacy of Slavery Initiative. There's a saying, and I use it often. It's not where the boat dropped you off, it's where it picked you up. Despite their different lineages, my students, Kimani, Mariah, and Ife, are still experiencing blackness at an overwhelmingly white institution. Ife puts it like this. I feel like we all recognize that being black is a universal experience. I am black primarily. The issues facing racism, colorism, anti-blackness, um, they don't really result from like Nigerian heritage. It's mostly from being black in America. And when they say, you don't got here because you're black, you don't deserve to be here. It's not because you're first generation black or you're generation African American. It's because you're black, period. And I think being born into this country, you are forced to take on the story of generational African Americans as a black man, as a black person in this country. And so I think there's something unique about how children of immigrants experience this country that their parents are not able to relate to. So while racism is definitely rampant in America, my parents aren't able to relate to that racism in a visceral way. Whereas me being a person born in America and the son of immigrants, I'm able to uh, empathize and share in those experiences of Black Americans. There are differences to our universal Black experience that have been affected by the cultures we've been surrounded with, but it's still that diaspora, like that coming together of one people, one nation as being Black, period. When it comes to the, the, the Black student body population across the diaspora, where are points where you've seen, you know, a coming together? I'd say I've seen the coming together at Black Convocation, which is our annual event where the entirety of Black Harvard comes together to start off every academic year. And in those spaces, you see the Black excellence. You see the coalescence of Black culture, whether it's Africans, Caribbeans, generationals, we're all coming together to share in the experience of what it means to be Black at this institution. I think it's very important that we check up on each other as members of the Black community in our respective club meetings, whether that's GASA, whether that's the Harvard Caribbean Club or the Nigerian Students Association the breakdown of our different cultural and affinity groups can sometimes abrade the coalescence of what it means to be Black. So I understand that we have, we have different identities and that we have specific needs based on those identities, but it's important that every now and again, we come together to facilitate some large-scale Black cultural experience. Hello, and welcome to Black Convocation on I think even the culture shock within the Black community, you sort of just have to like embrace it and also find all the beauty in interacting with different cultures across the diaspora. You know, finding my place within that um, has been something that I think is pivotal to my growth as a person and has um, like a generationally Black person in America. I totally agree with Kamani. I think Black communication was so beautiful. I feel like having those like big, just like all Black students getting together, those are always like my favorites um, because it's just like a celebration of all the cultures together. And it it feels... It feels more unifying and like less isolating for me sometimes. Sitting down with these students, like I've gotten to do multiple times a week, you feel that sense of community. Even if the university isn't ready or equipped to have some of these difficult conversations about the diaspora on campus or blackness for that matter, I have no doubt the students will do it themselves. So I feel like as for generations, we think it's like a competition. It's like if one of us increases, that means the other has to stay the same. But I feel like in acknowledging that both numbers can increase and percentages can increase, I feel like a lot of immigrants, they like to think like, oh, we're giving our child a spot. But what about the other people who are descendants of slaves, who are generationally African-American? It's really the initiative of them. We can only do so much as students. They have the resources. They have this $50 billion endowment that's just sitting pretty, sitting pretty, that you can use to go into schools, to send admissions officers to school, to talk about the yeah. program. And I think that that change really can like start right here, like with the Black students and, and making more structural changes, as we've all talked about, making those tangible efforts to reckon with their past could really inspire America 
to do the same. And I really believe that that's an incredible opportunity, having that bigger perspective of being like, I can change not just of what it's like to be here, but what it's like to be in America because of how inextricably linked Harvard is with America. You have to always have that in the back of your mind that you're not just inflicting and, and changing what's happening on Harvard's campus, but it really can have larger implications for greater society. We want to hear from you. You can tweet me at Tremaine Lee. That's at Tremaine Lee, my full name. Or you can write to us at IntoAmerica at NBCUNI.com. That was Into America at NBC and the letters UNI.com. I believe in the specificity of what used to be called Negroosity. You see, to be a black man from Mississippi and Georgia is not the same as being a black man or black woman from Colombia or Cuba or Haiti. But we have to have specificity and solidarity. That solidarity is deep, but the specificity is real as well. And they're wrestling with you. I mean, I'll give you an example. You know, I stand on the, on the floor of the Harvard faculty, you know, many decades ago. I said, well, I'd like to know how many black students we actually had. Oh, we've got 11%. No, I'm talking about ex-Negroes. I'm not talking about from Africa. I'm not, not talking about from the Caribbean. Ex-Negroes. And when I came in 1970, we had 90 ex-Negroes. And the answer finally I got was we had 21 because the number of ex-Negroes had gone down, but the number of black folk had expanded exponentially, but they came from other places. The Otto's movement is a response to how do you deal with the specificity of black folk from Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, California, Chicago, Detroit versus our precious brothers and sisters from Africa, Caribbean, Latin America. So just and to I jump in a little bit. I have no tolerance yeah. for using, let's call it ex-Negro specificity as a way of precluding solidarity. But at the same time, you can't homogenize New World Africans in such a way that you downplay Jamal. And I don't Jesus disagree. Yeah, and I don't think I disagree with that. Jose from Puerto Rico. Yeah. Both yeah, I was I was in a movement, black, but having different history. 